How you doing everyone? It's Monday morning, 8 o'clock. I didn't uh, post a video yesterday. I've actually been down with a head cold uh, a couple of days and a bit of a, a, bit of a shocking night's sleep. So I've got a um, 16.47 rated opponent from Australia who's playing the perk against me. Okay. So I'm already kind of uh, out on my own to some degree. Okay, knight attacks this pawn. Uh, you can play knight c3 because there's no danger of this bishop coming out and, and pinning the knight. All right. This is now an Indian. I'm expecting... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so black's probably going to want to get in the move e5 at some point. Now, you know, f4 is a thought. I know he wants to play e5. f4 would be really aggressive. Another idea is this, but this works against the modern when um, black tries to fianchetto the bishop before bringing out the knight. But it doesn't work. h4, h5 doesn't work here because there's two attackers on h5 and it's defended only by the queen and the rook. So, you know, pawn takes, you can't recapture. So... We have options, you know, definitely at some point this. So, I mean, it makes it makes sense to bring this bishop out so that we can drop the queen behind the bishop. So probably one of these three squares. So, you know, bishop g5, yes. Definitely an idea. This bishop coming out as well, also an idea. There's nothing wrong with this knight coming out either. And, you know, I, I think I may want to do this. But the question is, is f5 just ludicrous at this point? So let's say f5... Bishop Fianchetto's this. That's pretty good. Problem with f5 is it, it does block in the bishop. So let's bring out the bishop first. And I'm going to reserve the right to play f5 maybe later on. Okay, this is all good. I think I can just drop the queen behind. Build the battery already. Um... Really kind of on my toes against the mid 1600s rapid player. But I'm feeling all right so far. I haven't done anything stupid as far as I know. So yeah, I've had a major head cold. But in, in, in my worldview, um, head colds doesn't mean you, you've caught a virus. A head cold is uh, a natural detoxing process. And. Uh, which is probably a good thing, and you should allow them to, you know, to happen. The point is, you need to rest. You need to rest, you need to feed, and let it do its stuff. Your body's actually very good at healing itself. Okay, so long castles here is, is fine. Um, yeah, let's do that. I might just continue to develop as well. Maybe, maybe bishop c4. Don't know about this knight yet. This knight can... Uh, Take its time. This is defended. And and maybe the presence of this bishop on g5 is just making him think twice about, about e5. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of tempting to put in f5 as well now. Let's think that through. f5 now. And that really is setting out my stall, saying I'm coming for you. Gives this, but then the queen defends that square. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Is this is this something called the is it the 180 attack or the 360 attack or the something attack against the perk with with three pawns? I think it. Um, I think this is a thing. I mean, it's pro I'm probably playing it very late in the day, but I don't know. I mean, look at that central control, please. Uh huh. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, well, first first thought is is to ignore the pawn. If he takes, I can take, but that walks into a potential discovery from, from the uh, Fianchetto bishop, yes. But if I do this, then that removes the discovery. And if I do this, he could take, but then I can just take back. If I do this. 
The other option is is to develop a knight. You know, whenever you're still in the opening phase, you're not completed development, which I haven't because I've still got two minor pieces on the back rank. Um, it always makes sense to to ask the question: Can I achieve what I need to achieve with development? And I think so. I think I think knight f3. So if he takes here, I just have this, and I'm, I've I've stuck a knight in the center of the board, and it's got to be a good thing. I'm still kind of toying with e5. Now with mucho defense. And it has to be said that, that okay, here we go, that um, black is, is still suffering from a bit of a lack of space. Which you've got to be okay with if you're going to play the, the perk or the philidor. Okay, and here we have it. Here we have e5. Finally, e5 comes. I can take, you can take back with a range of pieces. I'm li liking the fact that this backwards pawn here is uh, is indefensible, you know. But actually, if I take and pawn takes, then he's he's reconnected. Um, if I allow him to take, I can take back with queen. I can take back with that. Um, I mean, that's a threat. Let's stick my knight on b5. Knight on b5 is defended by my bishop. I'm actually threatening this pawn. And what can he do? I mean, what happens if he pushes it? Well, if he pushes it, I can take there, I guess, or I can even push on. Um, I'm simply threatening this pawn. So here he does this. I can come in. I threaten this bad bishop. But right now, it's his bad bishop. Uh, and apart from anything else, the minute I, I move this knight, I've got three, well, potentially two or three attackers, depending on where the knight goes, right? If the knight goes here, that's three attackers on this pawn, so he's going to have to do something, isn't he? And I actually think that, you know, any clearance of pawns around here. So let, let's think about what happens if f takes e5. He can take back with the knight and centralize his own knight, but that leaves him with an iso. That's a little abbreviation what I just made up. Here, I, I think pawn takes is maybe more likely. I can flip around here. I've then attacking that once, it's defended, but it's not actually because the knight's effectively pinned. So should I just take here? So we've got two candidate moves really here. We've got fe and we've got knight b5. Knight b5 just looks kind of wonky to me. I'm going to take. This knight's also pinned, right? So I think I think this this is almost obliged now, isn't it? Pawn takes. But when pawn takes, If I just flip back here, I'm attacking this pawn. This this guy's effectively pinned because the queen's only defended once. And I'm now simply threatening to take this pawn. We might have rookie eight. Still got a bad bishop. This is like a French bishop, you know. But of course it's not. It only needs the knight to move. Now, the knight's not under immediate... Okay, so he's whipped out the, the, the lady. If you take... If I take there, he can take back with the bishop and the pawn's defended twice. If he was to take, in fact, the queen defends the pawn also here. So now I'm just thinking it's time to complete development, yeah? I think so. Nice looking at this, but it is defended. Then if he wants to trade queens, we trade queens, fair enough. I'm the one with an isolated pawn here now. Okay, just drop back. This pawn is now defended only by the queen. He can't bring his rook to d8. So it's actually... Well, it's not mate, but it's losing. <laughs> ah, apologies for the sniffles, guys. And I'm, I'm happy with this bishop. This is a nice place for it to be. 
Favourite of Bobby Fisher, bringing out the bishop and then drop it just back so it's defended by two pawns. In turn defending the pawns, it's nicely locked up here. This is a very secure little wee corner here for the king. And there's no c pawn, so black is kind of a little bit under power to attack my king. You could say the same on the king side, where I've only got three against four. Okay, he's having a sniff around my horse. Rook df1 has some merit, because that puts two attackers on this and potentially on that. I like this idea. On the other hand, it takes the rook off of the d-file, so that does then enable either rook to come to d8 with tempo. Actually, either rook can come to d8 with tempo anyway now. Well, can it? Because I just take, take, take. That's two rooks for a queen. I'm fine with that. Okay, so we could just kick of the bish. Could kick of the bish here. Takes, takes. Kick the bish. Is he just worried about this? What's what's the issue? Or do I play my other rook to f f one? There, if he trades, I'm happy with that. I think I think that's that's okay. Still not concerned about this. That knight's defended that for ages. If he wants to trade off, uh, but in, alternatively, where can he go? I mean, h5 isn't even an option. He gets trapped. So it's if he doesn't trade, he's he's got to retreat like this way. There we go. And now, look, I have no pawn on the g-file. His king is on the g-file. I can remove his bishop from the g-file at will. I could even try this, you know. Eradicate the bishop. h4, h5 is still on. This pawn is pinned here, this guy. On f7. So it's still fairly comfortable. His knights have got good control over the light squares. That's not... A real biggie. This knight is not the most powerful creature on the board. You know, it really, it really can't advance anywhere. So that's kind of okay. Now, big decision. Big decision. Do I want to trade my queen for his two rooks, or do I want to dodge out the way and allow him to trade a pair of rooks? So let's calculate it, all right? Notice this pawn is now pinned and defended only by the king. So let's say I was to take, he has to take, I take back, that's check. He can't block with the knight, so just take it, okay? So take, 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 he has to block with the bishop and loses the knight. Or have I cocked up my thinking some? Take, he must, well, yeah, he must take. I take, that's check. Knight blocks doesn't work, loses material. Bishop blocks. I don't see it. I just don't see it. I'm going to pre-move the recapture. This is the, uh, it's the only legal move. Well, no, there's two legal moves. Both, both of them lose the knight. Explain. at this point is defended by the queen though. This pawn's really well defended on a2. He's simply a piece and a pawn down now. And his bishop's pinned. So I'm even threatening this. Damn. So what does he do? Does he he can't come back there because I just take the knight. This is this is this is not good. Right? By the way, because I'm now on day 36 of my uh, strict regime without coffee, sugar, bread, carbs, basically. Um, 
I have had a few paracetamol today. I don't, sorry, I don't know what you call them in other parts of the world. Just, you know, cold painkillers. <sighs> what? Um, but in the second 30 days, I'm going to focus on getting a lot more seafood in. And he resigns. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, I'm getting a lot more seafood in. So I'm going to see how the old brain responds to a lot more omega-3s. So basically, there's there's some very important omega-3 fatty acids that you need to build your brain. One of them is uh, DHA, that's docosahexaenoic acid. It's a 22-carbon omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid that's uh, really found nowhere in the plant kingdom that um, bacteria, I think, can synthesize it, or there are some animals that could, like, you get it in beef fat, for example. But the best sources are like marine algae, and uh, oily fish, small oily fish like pilchards, mackerel, sardines, anchovies, stuff like that. Okay, look at this, 89.7, guys. Fish power. I'm coming for you, fish. 2050. Boom shakalaka. And in fact, Jesus Christ. On a stick, I was never worse in the entire game. I had one miss. Did you see a miss? I mean, it's it's a it's a little miss. Or is that my mistake? I don't know. Anyway, let's go through it. Bookity 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 book. Oh, bam bam! An inaccuracy. What should he have done? Stop my eight from coming in. Right. Interesting. Best move. 2050, dude. 2050. Get in, hunty. And Andy's not on top four. F4 is the miss. Oh. Oh. Seeing I should have gone N straight away. 1.82. That was the miss here. Only move that works. Show me. Oh, and that's it. It's not one of these long fishy lines. Yeah, just push in. Okay, well, okay. So I do this and he take us, right? And then take us. Yes? He still has to go back. And then it's saying knight d5. Ooh, ouch! Well, bishop takes, even worse. Yeah, get it, get it. Anyway, anyway, very pleased with that. I pulled out a 2000 level game against the 1650-ish opponent. Omega-3 power. So yes, a lot of your brain is actually made up of DHA, or it should be. And people who don't get enough DHA get smaller brains, they actually shrink. Um, another one is EPA, that's acosapentanoic acid, that's a 20 carbon omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid. Um, and there, there's some others like arachidonic acid as well, very important, but yeah, basically seafood, seafood um, is, uh, is a key. And there's, there's a good theory that, that human beings evolved. Yeah, well, we know that According to anthropology, the Australopithecus is like three and a half or whatever million years ago, um, got the big brain. So Australopithecus had re regular sized brain for quite a long time. And then it suddenly tripled in size in a relatively short period, which we think is to do with the retreat of the rainforest. They went out onto the savanna and started to smash into bones using hammers made out of rocks because they had opposing thumbs being apes. And then being able to access the bone marrow and the brain matter gave, allowed them to grow much bigger brains. They had to shrink their guts accordingly and become primarily carnivorous. Um, and that's then led to, led to us. But there's, there, there's also a theory of like the aquatic ape theory that, um, you know, becoming actually Homo sapiens sapiens, which is our species, that we, we evolved around the coastlines where we had much more access to these very, very important fatty acids. And on that bombshell. We'll leave it there. Uh, well, that was a good game. You know, it's just solid. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. 
I'll see you next time.